All right. Today we are out aboard the transition relay. What a beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today I have the transition relay. This is a real baller build, the PNW build. So we got that XO transmission set up, real nice. A Fox factory fork and coil, some heavy duty e-brake specific TRP brakes. What you gotta say, I feel good. Anvil components, wrap it out. I really do like this handlebar and stem anyway, though. Overall, really good build. Really nice bike. And for a mid-power e-bike, pretty lightweight. Not, not having any problems so far. This is their lighter weight mid-power e-bike. And I've been really excited to ride it after how, how much fun I had on the Trek Fuel EXE. So let's see how it gets on. See how things go. After a pretty good fire road climb already, I can definitely say it's a little bit louder, but it feels like it has significant more power, at least on the upper end of that EXE, or it delivers it better. I'm not totally certain about that, but definitely feels good. Got the usual switchbacks coming up. There we go. Let's see how this one goes. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, the power delivery is a little weird for that. We'll give it another try. So, e bike stuff. While I am checking out all the assistance levels, I rode primarily in rocket mode to see how long this thing would go. With that, I was able to get just over 17 miles and 2,850 feet of climbing in under two hours. That left two lights on the indicator, so I'm assuming there was a fair bit more in the tank. Well, I have got to say, I've done that on a lot of different bikes and that's the first time I really just had to give up. Definitely a bit of a disappointment. Let's keep going. See how it rolls. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button or subscribe. Also, if you need anything, check out my links to pick up stuff from Jensen USA, Rourke Apparel, and other places. Let's keep it going. So here's a little bit easier switch back. Still pretty hard one though. We'll see if this is any better. Oh. Nah. This is one of what I think is, at least switchback wise, the most technical climb around here, but it's still pretty disappointing that I wasn't able to get it around either of those switchbacks. All right, well, that was a good quick climb. Gotta say, the power output is very good and made short work of that. On the downside, this thing is real creaky. I'll ask the guys back at transition when I'm done what's up with that, but uh, it's kind of a bummer. And then the switchbacks, yeah. Just not what 
I expected. Efficiency, I don't know. It's an e-bike, so it feels good. It feels moderately efficient. It definitely feels like there's good power. It's good for monster truck and that kind of stuff. And the traction seems plenty there, which really should be. It's a one, I think 160 some coil sprung bike. So yeah, now we get to get into the fun stuff. Low bottom bracket. Well, this ride does not give you a whole lot before it gets a little, little scary. So here we go. Ah, not the best version of that line, but do you like that line more than monster trucking through the chunk? Rear tire slid out a little bit there. Woo. Definitely not Max's Max grip rubber. Good, fast, chunky section here. Depending on how the power comes on, e-bikes work pretty well around here. This one has a coil, so I'm a little nervous about the hook to flat coming up. But we'll, we'll see how it rides. Yep, pretty, pretty ankle smashing. All right. So, definitely taking this on the kind of terrain it's meant for, but doesn't mean it's not scary. crashed on that last time, but seems a little bit more built out now. All right, this is a newer feature to me, so I'm still a little nervous about it, but what are you gonna do? Woo! Yeah, that is so much fun. Descending. This bike has a ton of confidence and descends more similar to a traditional bike rather than an e-bike. But it does feel as if the center of gravity is a bit higher than the Trek Fuel EXE. Even set up as a mullet like the PNW build. The bottom bracket is very low, which isn't a huge negative, but I scraped more than I would have thought. Overall, it's not as nimble as say the Patrol or even the Spire, but still more lively than any full power e-bike I've ridden. With the coil, Traction was never a worry, and overall had a very confidence-inspiring feel similar to the Spire on Steep Send in India. Which is to say, it's more a feeling of, I got you, rather than get after it. This brings us to the good and the bad. When I look at this bike, it's exactly what I'd want out of an e-bike. The 38 up front and 170 mils of travel, it's the setup that I would go for, if I could only have one bike. It's also a great idea that you can easily take out the battery and pedal it up like a traditional bike. The Fazua system also has better power than I expected, especially on the steeper climbs I'm used to. This, however, is a great transition into what wasn't as great. On easier climbs, the Fazua cut off support just past 10 miles an hour. 
This was a bit confusing and I can't find anything on the website as to why that would be. While I didn't notice it on the first steep climb, it was a bummer on the meandering climb that followed. Sticking with my gripes on the Fazua system and echoing other complaints I've heard, the ring controller does feel a bit cheap and I couldn't tell if I was accidentally bumping it to turn down the power or if it was just getting jostled to the point where it would change my selected power. Having to remove the battery to charge is also a bit of a headache. Finally, I really value a quiet bike, and this unfortunately was not that on either of the climbs or the descents. This bike has obviously seen some use, so it's good to know what can happen after some time, but I would be scrambling to find a solution to the battery cover rattle if this were my own bike. Ooh. All right, well, they redid at least the top of Evolution. So I'm gonna check that out. Nice. Woo! Lots of fun. See how the rest of the trail. So who's this bike for? If you're looking for a lightweight e-bike and are more concerned with descending, big moves, and steeps, this is the lightweight e-bike for you. I'm pretty sure you could even keep yeah. up with your buddies on their full power e-bikes, e especially if their fitness is questionable. Good to slide around a little I would bit. say for most riders, the dual tune niner may be the way to go. It keeps the bottom bracket right. off the ground and would likely help this with the climbing. Old feature, but still fun. Final thoughts. Relay versus fuel EXE. I really like the relay. Compared to the Trek Fuel EXE, there are definitely some positives and negatives. But if you want more power and more descending confidence, this is the one to go for. People talk about how fast e-bikes are improving, and when you compare the EX to the Relay, the EXE does look more refined. It also looks more like a traditional bike, is easier to charge, and the motor is quieter. The Relay, on the other hand, has noticeably more power. 60 versus 50 Newton meters torque. Watt's power is a little more confusing with the Relay at 250, with an available 450 and the TQ just says 300. So I don't know if that's top or continuous. Yeah. I also like the relays well, added travel top. and burlier disposition. At the end of the day, Motor. both bikes had their creaking issues. So the playing field is still very even and I can only imagine what the next relay is going to look like. Always a fun trail though. It doesn't seem like they really changed anything except for that beginning. Over shot that. A lot of fun still. Phew. All right, and we're back at transition. Thanks again, transition, for the demo. And check out Jensen USA if you bike or you need anything else.